And welcome to Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis. It is Tuesday, August the 18th of 2020. Glad to have you with us. We've got a great half hour of HCC news and information and some guests on our show. You may recognize one of them. You probably recognize both of them, but we'll talk to them in a second. You know, Brittany has the day off and uh, we've got a special co-host that's going to join me. Well, he's here all the time. Frank Cooper is joining us from his house. Frank, we always say we're going to talk about sports, but we always run out of time. Why is that? Man, Brittany has a mouth on her that is it's irreplaceable, man. Love her to death, though. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, it's yeah, she's she's uh, she can take up a little time on the show, but we do love her. But one thing I want to let you do is uh, take over the role of Brittany and tell everybody what they need to do with the show and follow us in on social media. Absolutely. Guys, gals, students everywhere. Please, let's grow the show. Follow us on Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, on YouTube. Hit the notification bell so anytime we drop a video, you can check it out. Let's grow the show, guys. That's right. So we're going to be back with you in a little while, Frank, and we will talk sports today because we have a lot to talk about. We've got HCC news, information, announcements, all that coming up. But let's get to our guests this morning. Uh, Ravi Brombot is joining us, and Ravi's been on the show before. He is with the Shark Tank Ideas Pitch Committee team member, and he's the Director of Student Innovation Entrepreneurship, HCC Southwest. Good morning, Ravi. Good morning, Todd. Good morning, Frank. Good morning, Mac. Morning. It's good to have you here with us, Ravi. We're going to be back with you in a moment. We've also got Macklin Mac Woods, and you may recognize Mac because she's been in a few commercials for HCC in one of our latest campaigns, but she's also the second place winner in an event that I had a chance to uh, host a few weeks back, the Shark Tank Ideas Pitch Scholarship Competition. Uh, you're also a construction technology student at HCC Northwest Northeast, yeah, Northwest, I should say. Good morning to you, Mac. Good morning, Todd. And, and guess what? I knew you thought I was a cutie pie and finally put me on your show. Well, you asked me when we were we were talking during the competition when you were going to get on the show. I said you would, and here you are. I'm glad to have you with us, and uh, we're certainly proud to have you as part of our 2020 campaign that we uh, we launched. Uh, actually, it was late last year when we first launched the campaign. What's it like to see yourself on a billboard around town? I feel like a movie star, and actually, people treat me like a movie star. I mean, on the street, they're like you know, how do I know you? And I said, I think yeah. you probably saw me on the commercial. And a lot of people have seen the billboard. And it's like, wow, I thought it was so cool. This woman's on the billboard. She's doing construction. So yeah, they made me feel like a local movie star. Well, you're a local celebrity. And why don't you tell us what brought you to HCC? Well, when we sold our house, uh, after my sons moved off and went to college and they haven't been back, it's like, um, we don't really need this size house anymore. So I said, let me go to HCC and design a house for myself, only to find out that a lot of people um, need to right size, but the options aren't there. The only thing that's out there is really like an apartment. And everyone says, I don't want to move to an apartment, which I don't blame them because you're used to a house for decades. So needs to say, I went to HCC, met up with all these great professors and made the perfect house, Petite Estates. Yeah, so Petite Estates was your uh, pitch for the competition that you won second place. I was uh, very enthused by it. I think it's a great idea. Why don't you tell everybody about what the Petite Estates is all about? Well, it's a, it's not, so the new term now is right sizing, which is, is correct. And so you no longer really need a two or 3,000 square foot house for, for, for two people. So I designed a house that's two bedrooms, two bathrooms, two living rooms, um, has an elevator, and it has all the new technology, um, the, the uh, tankless water heaters. Um, my favorite is the HVAC uh, mini split system. And so that way you don't have all these ducts running through your house. And so everything's modern. Um, I also like the flooring because uh, the new flooring now uh, doesn't collect dust and mold and all these things. So now you have this really allergen free, really good house that you could basically live the rest of your life in. And these houses, you know, the houses are kind of, a lot of people think uh, small houses, tiny houses, that's the big trend. But these are kind of a step above that in between a tiny house and say a small house. You've got a, something in between that's really large enough for two people to live in comfortably. And with the elevator there, you can live in through the rest of your years there. Uh, correct. 
actually it, it's a, you said that exactly. It is a smaller house, not a tiny house. I, I tried tiny before and the sink was so little. I had more water on the floor than on my face. And I'm like, okay, tiny's not it. We don't want to go from one extreme to the next. We don't want to go from a large house to a tiny house that is just too extreme. So I found something in the middle. Everything is full size. Everything is normal. It's just less bedrooms and um, just maybe the right square footage. Instead of two or 3,000 square feet, 1,000 square feet is comfortable. Now, these estates that you're, you're looking at, have you uh, been able to get contracts? Are you looking for land? Are you looking to launch it? Where are you in the process of launching this business? So I put on my website, which my son is updated. Thanks, thanks to you guys making me hurry up and get my website ready. But okay. actually, going to launch in 2021. Um, I just um, applied for graduation from construction certification for my construction certification uh, this summer. But I'm going to take another class, and so um, actually, I'm taking a building code class, which to me is extremely important because I have to make sure everything's up to code. So um, after I take that and a few more real estate classes in 2021, ready to launch, looking for land and looking for customers. You know, it's an incredible idea. I want to hear more about this as you move forward with it. Who knows? I may be one of your customers in the future. It's just, uh, it's such a great idea. Because like I said, tiny houses are really the thing that's going, America seems to be going in that direction because they're so affordable. But this is a bit of a step above and it's a great yes. idea. Let me ask you about something else which kind of piqued my interest. You're interested in launching a reality TV show. Tell me about that. Old chicks making houses. <laughs> oh yeah. Actually, you know what happened? So in, um, in my first construction class, we did a project. And so I put videos and all those things in there. And so when they, when I put this video of me, you know, like with my swag and being a diva going to Home Depot to show them where you can purchase materials, they're like, we need to see it again. So I showed this video like 10 times in class. I'm like, guess what? I might as well launch my own reality show. Well, how, how far are you away from doing that? I mean, that sounds like something. It sounds like you're a type of person when you get an idea, you put yourself into it, you run with it and make it happen. So you're you're about to launch next year the uh, Petite Estates. How far are you away from getting this, uh, this uh, project underway as well? So actually, I have, um, go to my YouTube channel because I need subscribers. It's called Old Chicks Making Houses. And so, we'll yes. have the link to that in uh, in the post of this show. Your website and your YouTube channel, we'll put in the links to those. And, and you could be on the show too, Todd, if you like. Oh, you guys well, can be on the show. We can talk about that. <laughs> we just have fun. And then I have, um, I do have a celebrity mom in there. So we probably have a pretty good chance of getting a real show on uh, television. So I need to say, it's just, it's just fun. I mean, I'm a, a diehard entrepreneur. I found something that, that I absolutely love. Um, my children are doing well. So now I could finally just, do something that I really, really enjoy. So you were in this competition. I want to bring Robbie into the to the uh, conversation because Robbie um, Mac was part of the competition. We just had about uh, we, I guess it was about a month ago, maybe a little over. Right. Yeah. And July eighteenth. Mm -hmm. It tell me about the Shark Tank Ideas Pitch Competition when it was established, what it is, and what the contestants get a chance to do. Sure. So the Shark Tank Ideas Pitch Competition, you, you've had the committee members on the show and uh, Luisa, the other student that won as well. Uh, so the Shark Tank Ideas Pitch Competition started this semester. However, we've had a version of this competition called the Ideas Pitch Competition that started back in uh, 2015, uh, which is how I got my job, uh, celebrating five years. <laughs> hey, there you go. Yeah. And tell us a bit about the role you play at HCC because you work at the Entrepreneurship uh, Center. Right. So my, my title, official title is Director of Student Innovation and Entrepreneurship. And really what that means is I am trying to uh, build up a culture of collaboration, creativity, innovation to get amongst the students, faculty, staff, and the public. Uh, I have an internal role and then an external role. Uh, I've got a simple motto that says build awareness, inspire action. So... I can explain that a little bit uh, later. And you also uh, do something called hackathons as well as part of your job title. Uh, what is a hackathon and what does it involve? It, it's exactly what it sounds like. We hack things. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's really a rapid prototyping exercise, right? We get people together, uh, talk about a, a, an issue in the world or, or in our backyard uh, in Houston, and we try to solve for it with just random thought, random diversity of ideas and people. 
and uh, we're using the resources that we have and just solve for it. You know, we don't sit there trying to big, make a big business plan out of it. We just want to solve for the idea with the resources we have and take action, get it, get it uh, in front of people. And let's go back to the Shark Tank's ideas competition. And I know we had Louisa on and uh, some folks on, uh, I think it was last week or the week before, uh, but some people may have not seen that show. Let's get into what the shark, who the sharks were and because many people have seen, I believe it's the ABC show, uh, Shark Tank. Uh, so tell us who the sharks are for HCC and some of the uh, ideas for businesses that were pitched during this competition. Right, so our shark this semester was uh, Dr. Amy Tan, the Dean for English, uh, Dr. Maya Darnovo, the ABC for, uh, so, uh, the HCC Chief Entrepreneurial Officer, that's a better title for her. Uh, then we had the HCC Foundation board member, uh, Jean Perdue. And then we also had a business owner, uh, William Hubbard, uh, who, owned, uh, who owns Will Power Total Fitness from the community. So those were our four sharks. Uh, uh, a very diverse uh, and just a different perspective from an English dean to an entrepreneurial officer uh, to a foundation board uh, member to a business owner. And so what were some of the competition ideas that were pitched during, uh, during the event? So one you've just heard with Mac, uh, one second place. First place was Louisa from the fashion program creating a COVID collection of multi-purpose masks, uh, very vibrant color, beautiful. Uh, designs that she had. Uh, we had a student who pitched an idea, uh, Dozy pitched an idea about music, musical instrument rentals. We had Joshua Porter, uh, you know, submit an idea about, you know, a, a inflatable, uh, I forget now how to say it, but it's the... Uh, uh, inflatable bedpans. Bedpans. That's yeah, there's no way of getting around that, Robbie. <laughs> yeah, I, try, I was trying to be. <laughs> it's a bedpan. <laughs> but it was a fantastic idea. And we it had, was. Uh, Edward Carpenter, who's pitching an idea about service and just using the community to support each other uh, with, with the skills people have to support people that need certain skills. And, uh, you know, just uh, we had a, a doula pitch a, uh, a maternity box idea, yeah. uh, post, post uh, uh, maternity box. And, and it was just just very uh, new ideas that are that are now looking for a market. They were new, they were unique, and um, uh, they were, uh, the presentations were great. You know, the, uh, the, the folks who presented, the students were, did a great job doing that, especially uh, the winners. But I guess, uh, Mac, I'm gonna ask you this, you are fortunate enough to, to win uh, second place, but realistically, you don't have to win this competition to get something out of it. Uh, correct. So actually, I'm going to be in the Houston liftoff competition, and actually, the Shark Tank helped me a lot to practice in uh, because I'm a native Californian. They say I speak so fast. So actually, Shark Tank, I've learned that I can really speak slow and stay within the time frame, and that I need to work on my lighting and you know just different things when I do the pitches. So it was a good start and a, a, a good practice. And actually, I love that bedpan idea. I think um, I can sell that to some some of my customers too. And um, Ravi, the cool thing about this competition, which I, I wasn't aware until I worked with you guys on it, um, is that it's a real collaboration. You kind of touched on this because you're bringing all these departments together, including the speech department who joined up with you guys for this. Right. And, and it is a collaboration because we had to have HCCIT manage the whole program in the background. Uh, we had you from the HCC TV to actually moderate and host the show. Uh, the speech department with Dr. Daniel Stagg, uh, Dr. Angela Anderson, and uh, Professor Ruth uh, Salisbury, all of them, you know, were, it was a collaboration and we hope to, you know, every, every year we have two of them, one with an internal partner and one with an external partner. So in the fall, we're looking to partner with Impact Hub Houston and uh, do a, a version of the competition, uh, the Ideas Pitch Competition again, uh, HCC Ideas Pitch Competition. And then in the spring, we'll repartner with the speech department. And we also have the economics department very interested in with uh, Richard Gosselin and his group uh, interested in introducing the entrepreneurial education into the classroom uh, through a pitch competition. Richard Gosselin, you see him everywhere these days. That guy just, uh, I don't think he ever sleeps, you know. So let me ask you this, Ravi, you touched on the fact that a couple of competitions are coming up. Um, how do people, if you're a student and you want to get involved with this, do you have to enroll? Do you have to take a certain class? How does that work? 
So it's actually uh, very simple. You, you, it's an online form that we put up on hccs.edu/pitch, and on this, uh, you know, they just fill out the, you know, they have to be a current student. Uh, different versions of the competition. We've had one where it's uh, where it's open to high school students. It all depends on our sponsors. If our sponsors allow us, we'll we'll open it up to a broader audience. Uh, with the foundation, we were really focused on HCC students. So if they go to the website. Uh, read the rules and, and the regulations, and then just apply. We don't really have a prerequisite. Uh, we will offer training sessions. They're not mandatory. We usually offer an ideation training uh, and a pitch presentation training uh, minimum. Uh, and and uh, we'll offer others if it's a uh, you know a longer uh, competition. Well, Ravi Brombot, we appreciate you joining us this morning. I know I'll be seeing you sometime in October for the next competition. Absolutely. And if you want some, uh, if you want more information on the pitch competition, you go to hccs.edu/pitch. We'll have that po that uh, website address in the in the uh, uh, post for this uh, show as well. And Mac, we want to thank you for joining us here. I know you're very busy with all you have going on, but we always appreciate having you on the show. You're welcome. Thanks, Mac. We'll see you in the future. Okay. Bye bye. So we're going to move on over across town to Frank Cooper. Frank is joining me once again. Frank, before we get to our HCC news and information, let's talk a little bit sports. Uh, some things happening this week. Looks like the NBA, yeah, they're going to have a playoffs. Will they make it through the full playoffs? How's that working? Well, yesterday was the first day of the of the playoffs, and it was a conjuper header, and it was great. Like, we had three out of, out of the four were close games, and – the nightcap Dallas against LA was a was a nail biter. Um, I think I think NBA will make it because players can't go anywhere and they're yeah. have a bubble the whole time. So um, I think this next month and a half is going to be great for them. Um, now football and and uh, and other non bubble sports that's yeah. that remains to be seen. Um, I know yesterday the Kansas City Chiefs came out and said that uh, they're opening they're opening uh, night. Uh, game for the season will be a 22% capacity. So the will have fans there. So that's going to be pretty interesting. I don't know how that's going to work, but um, the NFL is dead, dead set on having fans in, in some capacity this year. Yeah, it's it's strange to see the games without fans in the stands and the piped in uh, noise. I don't know if that all works for me. And the Texans just announced, guess what? There are going to be no fans in uh, Energy's opening game for the Texans. Not going to be happening. They really have an established date on when they're going to have fans in the stadium. I guess it's a wait and see attitude because realistically they could come back. And like you said, they're not playing a bubble. A bunch of players could test positive and then what happens? Yeah, like the, the whole idea of traveling during this pandemic is what I don't understand. Like, what basketball is doing is, is genius. Like you, you run out of campus, you stay in the bubble. And if you leave, if you can leave, if you come back, you got to quarantine for 10 days and get tested yeah. multiple times. So the, the whole idea of like players getting, getting airports in and out of, in and out of cities, it's just, I don't know. And then with the fall approaching, you no know, flu season's on the way. So that could play a part too with the temperature dropping. So I, I don't, I don't know about football. Um, to, That remains to be seen, but I know, like I know, we, I know we briefly talked about it last week. College football, two of the major conferences are already saying they're not they're not having sports to the spring. Uh, I think the right. Big Ten and yeah. the uh, ACC. So we're going to yeah. see. Yeah, I mean, where's that going to go? I mean, college sports is even a bigger doozy because uh, those those players aren't getting paid, and uh, I know a lot of them want to play, but uh, is it worth bringing them back? I think they're all missing out on a big marketing opportunity here. Here's my thought: you get like J.J. Watt. Um, Deshaun Watson, a number of the high profile players, you get them to play other team players, high profile, you know, um, on Madden sports. And then you televise that. And then you make that a marketing opportunity. Everybody wins. People are watching ESPN, Madden, you know, and I, I think they, they're just missing out right now. You know, the NBA did something similar to that. Back in April and May, they did, they did an NBA 2K challenge where star players yeah. really chose a 2K tournament. I can't remember who won, but it, I mean, it had, it had a huge ratings. This is when, well, was at a time when anything sports was going to happen. 
Well, I mean, we could be heading into the fall with uh, no sports. A lot of college sports may be played in the spring. Could be a prime opportunity. They did it in the spring, so they may be able to do it in the fall with uh, the NFL and at least the, the college football uh, league as well. So NCAA, we'll see how that goes. So, Frank, let's get into our uh, events and announcements. Uh, the Black History Breakfast, it's a fundraising virtual scholarship breakfast showcase by the Black History Committee, and that's going to take place next week, Wednesday, August the 26th. Yeah, and to register, guys, go to acc.events.idolome.com forward slash virtual dash breakfast. And to we'll have that post in the, we'll have that link in the post as well, Frank. Absolutely. For this show. And one thing to keep in mind with this, this is the first uh, scholarship fundraising event that uh, we've delved into in this new virtual world. So we're encouraging everybody to join us and participate. Please donate. You know, during these times, Frank, um, a lot of nonprofits are suffering because the donations aren't there. People need the funding for themselves when they normally give to nonprofits. So our students are still needing the money for scholarships. So we're trying to raise the money virtually right now. We do encourage everybody to join us. And it's going to be on our Facebook page at 9 a.m. Wednesday, August the 26th. Uh, because of our convocation on Friday, Frank, we're going to be delaying our show. Are you going to be joining us at 11 a.m. Friday? Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, yeah, I mean, I know with, with our convocation, uh, up to the minute, we'll be, at, we'll be delayed one hour. So I will be there, fans, uh, the 21st, not 10 a.m., but 11 a.m. So, so chime in and, and check us out. And we're having our first virtual convocation. Uh, the registration's over with, but for more information, you can go to hccs.edu slash convocation. That happens at 10 a.m. on a link that you can get through that or through your email. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, student virtual lobby, Frank, is open right now and students are encouraged to apply, but it's taking a little time to get back because the volume is very high with questions. Yes, students. So please be please be patient. I know phone lines are full. I know um, our inboxes are full, but we all we will get back to you. Um, the great thing about the about the Zoom uh, the Zoom feature is that we have extended hours. So um, Monday and Thursday we'll, we'll, we'll open 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. to submit your questions and for us to answer. Friday 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Saturday 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Um, to access that Zoom, go to www hccs.edu forward slash virtual lobby. If you are needing money for school for the fall to attend HCC, of course, to go to college, uh, the foundation scholarship deadline is just a couple of weeks away. August the 31st is the date that you have to register. For more information, you can visit the, the foundation, uh, hccsfoundation.org slash scholarships. Uh, for more information and to fill out the application there. We encourage you to do so. Uh, believe it or not, Frank, we are already heading into the fall semester and uh, we're still heading back on August the 24th, but everything's going to be virtual for the first few weeks. Yeah, so uh, so HCC has decided to do the first six weeks remotely uh, starting, uh, starting August 24th. Now, September 28th, faculty or in-person classes return to campus. And then October 5th, in-person flex campus and lab-based courses begin. Remember to sign up for all classes because of the only nine people per class. Uh, so hcs.edu forward slash apply to, to register. There's been some questions in social media, and I know you may have fielded a few of them, and I know Brittany does, where students are saying, look, I have the flex classes, but you guys are going online um, August 24th. What happens with my flex class? Well, we had Dr. Ewan on the show last week to talk about how that works. And here's the deal. If your class is at, if your flex class would be at 9 a.m. on, say, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, then you will be online on a schedule, more or less. So your class will be virtual, online at 9 a.m. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You'll have a chance to meet virtually with your uh, professor and to uh, take your course and also interact with your course mates. So it's just like online on a schedule, but in on August or on October 5th, Frank, you'll get a chance to go to the campuses in a small limited fashion to attend classes in person if you wish to do so. Absolutely. And, and students, just so you guys know, this is not all set in stone. I mean, depending on how bad the pandemic gets, things could change on a dime. So please just stay tuned on hccs.edu for, uh, for news, 
and notes uh, throughout the uh, fall semester. It's one thing we are uh, going to make changes in the schedule as needed uh, should the uh, CDC guidelines be lifted, we hope, or uh, more restrictive. We're going to make sure that you're going to get a chance to uh, keep attending college here at HCC and we'll stay online for you as we've been for the past uh, five months or so. Only uh, two week uh, enrollment info sessions left, Frank. If you're attending uh, classes in the fall, you have to take one of these sessions. Absolutely. The next session is uh, this Thursday, August 20th from 1 to 2 p.m. Now that classes are about to begin, these sessions are about to end. So please, you know, get in, get in with admissions, testing, financial aid, et cetera. So to uh, register and find our dates for future sessions, go to hccs.edu forward slash information sessions. Yeah, and you know, it seems like we've been talking about that for months now because we have, and it's like, oh, you'll have a through the end of the summer, they're doing it on a weekly basis, but now it's getting down to the final two, not a whole lot of them left. Uh, so you really need to register for one of those. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, and this, this is the new world right now. So and I know HCC, we're doing our, our best to make sure students are, they do have the, uh, the necessary tools to be successful. So we're here for you guys. Like I said, I know we're backed up right now, but we're doing whatever we can to make sure we attend to every student's needs. So Frank, there's a HCC faculty and staff virtual coffee breaks. They've been going on all summer long. And uh, the next one is today, I believe at 11 a.m. And Dr. Kurt Ewan and Dr. Shante Gray's vice chancellors will be on talking about some of the things we've been talking about during the show. Absolutely. So we'll be talking about the, uh, the future of this college and, and, and what's, what's to expect, launching a series of role shows about it as well. And then the next uh, coffee break is, is virtual as well. Thursday, August 20th, Farrell Prestige, who is this, this uh, chief information officer. So grab a, co grab a cup of coffee with uh, HR Director Jana May and, and sit down and let's gain, gain some information and knowledge about what's going on in this world. So Frank, I got to ask you, I don't think I've asked you yet, but I've asked everybody else that's been on the show, including Brittany. A lot of us during this shutdown have been ordering out or picking up food uh, from restaurants. What's your go-to place for takeout? You know what? Uh, my mom gets with me all the time about, about eating out too much. So back in April, I bought a grill and yeah. uh, I've been grilling a lot more. So I've been going to the meat market, getting some chicken, some steaks, some veggies. And I grill about three, four times a week. I'm a horrible cook, but I'm a wonderful griller on, this, on, the, on the grill, so. Do you so have I, any I new things you've been grilling that you've been trying out that you hadn't tried before? You know what, I've always grilled meats. I started like steaming and grilling my veggies now. So like, you know, potatoes and like asparagus and you know, I slow cook them for about an hour, glaze a little bit of honey on there, man. It's, it's, it's really, really good. Uh, Cooks.com is where I get my, my, a lot of my recipes. So, you know, for guys who can't cook, Bastards like myself, <laughs> go to cooks.com. It really helps you out. That's the way to go. Also, streaming. Everyone's been binge watching shows. Do you have any that you've uh, binge watched over the shutdown that you recommend? Yes. Hannah. I, me and my mom started Hannah. Oh, my wife just finished that. Oh, man. It's it's wonderful. The movie came out like seven years yeah. ago. Yeah. The show is, is exquisite. Great writing, great character development. And the action is wonderful. Um, I, I love espionage, assassin, CIA shows, man. It's it's really really good. What about yourself? So they they had me in season one, but they kind of lost me in season two, about maybe two episodes in. My wife finished it out just recently, but I, I got lost in it. So uh, you know that's. But I I did like the first season. I need to start season two. I, we binge watched season one in like a in like a day. So okay, we will kick off this week as well. So. Yeah, season two's out. I um well, I haven't finished the second season yet, but on uh, Netflix, the Umbrella Academy. Mm. So you, I don't know if you've seen that. I know you're a superhero buff. Yeah. This is one you need to see if you liked like The Watchmen, if you like that. The Boys. I just finished uh, that. You're gonna like Umbrella Academy. Start with season one. Season two's out. It's a little weirder than season one, but if you like those other two shows, you're gonna like this one. I definitely, I definitely put on my watch list. Yeah, I think a couple of my friends told me about Umbrella Academy. I haven't gotten oh, to yeah. it. I haven't started it yet, but I will start it this month myself. They don't use the best promotional posters for the show. Um, so you look at it and you think it might be a cartoon series or a series for kids. Uh, but no, it's it's a dark, 
superhero show and it is really good so that's one i've been uh, watching i'm looking forward to finishing up season two you know frank that about wraps up today's show we've got some uh, special guests tomorrow who are going to join us uh Artemis Foley, faculty member of the education department for the Academic Center of Excellence will be here and uh, she'll be talking about um, future jobs in the, that career path as well as future teachers of America. We've also got another special guest. He's here every Wednesday, Frank. That's right. Chief Cunningham will be, will be on the show tomorrow to bless us with his presence to talk about updated news around the campuses and what to expect. So, you know, tomorrow check in guys at 10 a.m. That sounds good. Thanks for being here, Frank. We appreciate you joining us. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. And thank you for joining us on Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis. That's your HCC News and Information for the day. We'll see you tomorrow live at 10 a.m.